I've got basically a thousand watts of solar power coming straight down here and powering an electric space heater. Yep, direct solar powered heating is now officially within reach. And with very simple series of switches, you're able to completely eliminate the possibility of backfeeding any power. Why not let the light of the sun heat your house this winter? So the idea is very simple. We take the power from the solar. I'm using a multi-port microinverter that uh, takes the DC power and converts it to 120 volt AC power. And then I'm simply using a relay right here to vary when that solar quote unquote sees the grid when I am only running this electric space heater. So that way the power comes in and just runs this load and we do not run any risk of back feeding to the grid. However, we do use the grid to augment and supplement any power that that solar array is not able to produce for the heater. I know that sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. Let me show you how this uh, apparatus works. Hey guys, I got to insert here. I'm not a licensed electrician. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are working with high voltage DC and AC power that can cause you harm, injury, or death, as well as property damage. So th this video is just for your entertainment. Be sure and involve a licensed professional if you want to attempt any of this. Okay, for less than 30 bucks, you can build a very simple contraption like this. And it may look like there's a gazillion wires, but it's actually very simple. Let me show you. This male plug plugs into your standard outlet, the grid power. We'll talk about what's happening here soon. But uh, the power feeds out of this port right here, and you can see this is just a female end. This is your load port. And this third plug right here is once again a female plug, and that is where your solar inverter will plug into. So what happens is grid power comes in here, and we've got two components right here. We have a current sensing switch right here, and then we have a simple relay with a 120 volt coil. So what happens? The wires from the grid come, they come in here and they connect to this side of the contactor. And then you may or may not be able to see that the load ports are also tapped on the same side of the contactor. So actually grid power comes in and immediately goes back out. There's no way to shut the grid power off. So you will always have grid power available at that plug. Well, notice on the uh, hot wire for the load, I've got this current sensing switch. That wire goes through that little hole and it senses the current. I've programmed this and you can program this switch very easily to close or turn on when it detects a minimum of 1200 watts, which is what the microinverter is rated for at its max. So then what happens is when that detects that amount of power flowing through the load wire, this closes and that energizes this large switch here, basically this coil, and it turns the switch on. That allows the solar that's going to be plugged into that to quote unquote see the grid power on this side of the contactor. It's going to allow the solar to boot up and then it will start powering the load right here. I've simply wired the neutrals to the same side of the contactor and the hots to the same side of the contactor. That way I get disconnect on both the hot and the neutral. And then obviously I've got all the grounds just tied together with this little uh, Wago connector. Then I've got uh, one wire right here that's coming up and energizing one side of the contactor. And then the other side of the contactor uh, comes over here and runs through this switch and then plugs into the hot side. The other benefit of this is now we're also isolating the, the solar and the loads from everything else in the circuit, right? Because the solar is going to disconnect when this load drops below the threshold that we've programmed on this switch. You will not run the risk of sending a huge amount of solar back into your house wiring and potentially having a fire issue. So let me simply hook this up and show you how it works. You may be wondering why it doesn't look wintry out here. Well, that's just because I'm in the process of filming other uh, videos with this solar array and knew that uh, I wanted to make this uh, video uh, in time for winter. So we've kind of stepped back in time just a little bit here. <laughs> All right, so I'm simply going to plug the grid into the grid input. I've got uh, the heater here and it's plugged into the load output. And I'm simply gonna plug the solar into the solar input on uh, that far side of the contactor. All right, what I'm gonna do right now, we're on fan mode and I'm going to put the microphone down by this uh, contactor so you can hear it click 
when I turn the heat on and uh, that will allow the solar power to flow into the heater. Did you hear that click? So now we're pumping out uh, nice warm air. Let's see what kind of power we're drawing. So 829 watts, 830 watts. Um, I'm actually gonna have to turn that up to high because the solar panels are going to produce more power than that. And that's an important factor. You need to be sure and not output more power from the solar than your load is going to consume. Otherwise, the power's gotta go somewhere. So if it's not getting all consumed by the load, it's gonna go back through the wiring and uh, into your house and hopefully be consumed by something in there before it gets pushed back out to the grid, which you really don't want if you don't have a grid tie agreement. So better to consume all the power with the load so you don't run a risk at all of backfeeding. So I'm gonna put this on high heat. Let's see what kind of power we're pulling. Uh, 1420-ish watts, 1400. It's shy of 1400 it looks like. So let's see what happens when that uh, solar uh, comes online. There's a safety feature built into the microinverter where it takes five minutes from the time it sees grid power here to the time that it starts producing power. So the way to maximize this would be to set your heater to run non-stop while you have sun hitting your panels. So that way you're making sure and using as much power as you can that's being generated from the solar. All right, the time delay is over and we're producing power. If we check in the EcoFlow app here, you can see we're producing just shy of a thousand watts, 980 or so watts. And if we come down here, you can see we were only consuming from the grid 413 watts is all, which makes sense because we were pulling, you know, 14-ish 100 watts and we're producing basically a thousand of those from those solar panels and uh, consuming it uh, here in the heat. And that's so cool. I just love this kind of stuff. And you could even take this a step further and get even more bang for your solar, so to speak. Instead of using a space heater, you could potentially use something else. And that could be something like this. This is a 120 volt mini split heat pump. These are way more efficient than those resistance space heaters. The only negative I foresee with this is because of how efficient you might not get up to the threshold high enough to justify the solar turning on, right? Without back feeding. These vary their capacity. So you're gonna get more heat for less power out of this, but you might not have as constant of a load, which could be beneficial to keeping the solar from back feeding. So it's kind of a toss up, but nonetheless, it could work. And one way to get around that potentially is to go ahead and let the house cool off, say at night, right? And then in the morning when the sun comes up, you know, go ahead and to crank it up to a higher temperature during the daytime, make use of that solar to heat your house up. So it's nice and toasty at nighttime where you can then let it cool off overnight and repeat the process as long as you have sun. Okay guys, leave your comments on what you think of this setup. I think this kind of thing is really the future of solar. If you can create small solar powered systems like this that offset large consumers in our house, that can make a very positive difference in our monthly bills for a very small expense. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments below. I try to read and respond to as many of those as I possibly can. I'd be interested in hearing your take on this. Don't forget to do those four free things for me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And that uh, will continue to add motivation and encouragement to me to uh, continue experimenting with things like this. And uh, hopefully in finding good solutions uh, for all of us so we can kind of insulate ourselves against just the skyrocketing prices of energy. We really need to be more self-sufficient when it comes to this stuff. All right. Sure appreciate you guys. And we'll catch you all next time.